Good evening, everyone. You're welcome to class nine of IFAN Schedule 5 June training. I hope you're all doing well. I hope we've enjoyed our week. I hope uh, we've rested well today. And I also hope we are ready for this class. All right. So what can you see, please? I like our support and our feedback as usual. What can you see? see your VM. You can see your VM and your servers on the left hand side. Thank you so much. Right. So uh last class we configured time server and we did some explanation on how you can back up your VMs. There are three yeah. things you can do. You can take snapshots of your virtual machines, either in their off state or running state. You can clone the virtual machines. We showed us how to clone the virtual machines. And then we can back the virtual machines up literally. Okay, but time did not permit us to show how to back up. So I'm just going to show us that now, how we can do a quick backup of our virtual machine. All right, so cloning and snapshot are forms of backup, but resident in the virtual box, right? So we also have a backup that can help you move your virtual machine from one virtualization software to another. So Oracle Virtual Box is a virtualization software developed by Oracle. We have the one for Microsoft Windows developed by uh, VMware developed by Microsoft. So the one we are going to show you now is the one whereby you can back up your virtual machine from Oracle VB and you can go and restore it in your virtual VMware. Microsoft VMware, all right? Is there anybody that didn't understand that? Class, are we together? That's understood. So what I'm saying is there are different virtualization softwares. One of it is this one that we are using in class, Oracle Virtual Machine, VB virtual box, and we also have VMware being run by Microsoft. Right now, this year machines here you can back them up such that you go to your VMware to restore them there. All right, so if for any reason you have Linux server here or you have your Microsoft machines here running and you need them, you, you need a function in VMware that you cannot find or you cannot find your way around here in virtual box. You can back up that machine here and then you go and restore it in your VMware. So that's the third way of doing backup. And that's what I'm going to show us right now. Let's see, we want to back this up. You can see, I just clicked on my item client. Are you with me? Please give me uh We are with you, we are with you. All right, thank you so much. File. Export Alliance. I want to back up this item client in its off state such that I can go and restore it in VMware. Come to file, export alliance, and then it will ask you of all the machines, which one do you want to back up? Okay. We have Python client, Python server two, the clone, okay. 
So of all these ones now, which I one do we? So let's pick I think clients. Yes. Oh, let's take, yeah, you can take this. I think, I think, all right, so look at it. Some are grayed out. Can someone tell me why these ones are grayed out? I think server and I think process clients. Does anybody know? Yeah, I don't know. Because they, are, they are running. Thank you. They are running. Thank you. Thank you. So the ones that are running, you cannot do backup for them. You can only use this tile to backup when the machines are in their off state. So let's do for item client. Next. All right. Then it will ask you what format. Always pick 2.0 is the latest. All right. And then this OVA is also a file type. All right. The one that is always readable by VMware. Okay. So you pick that format too. And then you drop MAC address policy to say include all network adapter MAC addresses. If you say include only NAT network adapter, should you export more than one machines? And you also need them to be communicating in any other utilization software you, you are importing them into, it won't work. But should you use include all network adapter MAC addresses? You expect it to work. Okay. You say next, and then it will show you these are all the things it's going to do. And say, uh, Uncle Fred, yes, sir. There's another third option. We didn't say anything about it. Let me go there. So it cannot go. Okay. This? Include ISD image file or something. Okay. Include ISO image files. It will make your, uh, it will make your backup to be heavy, okay. right? It's just like when you are doing snapshots and you say you should include all snapshots that you have kept. But you can also uh, check it. If you, if, you, if you are sure you have enough uh, storage, check it. It's a good one, okay? And then you do next so i was in the forum early today and one white guy from uh, i think pakistan tried to use this process to back up something he was facing a live scenario okay and we were trying to troubleshoot with him together okay and he was he was able to use this method to do backup for uh, I think two machines, he needed two backup for four machines. Okay. He was able to use it for two machines and the other two machines, we didn't know what happened. I said, when I got tired and I left, they were still troubleshooting. So maybe I'll find out tomorrow how he was able to resolve it. Okay. And uh, during last class, I wanted to skip this part because I, I thought like, well, you guys might not really use it. But after that troubleshooting today, I just think that I have to come back and show you people. If you look at the last class, you're going to see that I mentioned it. So after that, you say export. All right. And this is the old thing. Okay. It's already exporting here. So because uh, I just need to show you, we're not doing anything with it beyond here. Or maybe if time permits us, at the end of the whole module, we can also install virtual machine wear, VMware, and come and uh, do this. I first want to ask me one question here now. Huh? I first want to ask me a question. There's a question I'm expecting. Where is the backup, right? Thank you. All right, so when I say I can export it and then i can import it into somewhere else where then is the backup 
Can someone tell me? Has anybody experienced that? You have it on your local disk. My what? If I should, you have it on your local disk. Okay. On your local disk. Thank you so much. It is on my local disk. Where is my local disk? Geospectra slash. You can see my That's system, right? Geospectra slash. Can you there see will be me? a part. There will be a part in which one you are saving it or just you see it. Exactly. The That's what I wanted to hear. So you have to know the part in which you are backing it, where in which you are saving it when you are saving I'm it. I'm just trying to show you the particular part you you okay. export. Okay. Can you see my screen? You are looking at the VMs. Oh, okay. Screen. So. Uh, when you are installing your virtual machine, your, your virtual box, it installed in the part, isn't it? Yes. So that same place is where you're going to find it. Thank God this is on record. And then uh, we have done that. So I've been able to show us this. Another thing I also like to show us, remember where's my i server, the cloned one. I think, uh, <clears throat> so please, when I say you should go and do something, I've not done it in class, and it is in the curricula or curriculum, ensure that we do it, please. So there's a part I want to show you in virtual machine now. Someone uh, contacted me, the person created uh, a server machine and then cloned that server machine and trying to use the cloned one as the replica instead of going through the process of installing. You know, that's the beauty of cloning a machine. Can you hear me? Are we in class? Yes. 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 So, you know, when you clone a machine, all those time it will take loading 1%, 2%, 3%, it won't take that mm -hmm. much. All right. Yes. So that person was smart to know, okay, so if I do this and I've done, gotten to this point, I can clone it. So he cloned his machine and then he was trying to join it at a point to also make it see the domain, but he couldn't. All right. The moment he said a cloned machine, I just knew where the problem would be from. Okay, it's not the IP address. It's not the IP address because if it cloned properly, it won't be the IP address because it will it, it will need to change the IP address and he has changed the IP address. He picked okay. MAC, the independent MAC addresses. He, he did that. I mean, he did his cloning perfectly. But during the last class, I showed us one thing <clears throat> where you can go and generate specific SID, <coughs> excuse me, security identification number. Does anybody remember that? The except generate specific SID, that system might not be able to function independently. Yes, I think you mentioned something like that. Yes, so I want to avoid that uh, mention something like that now. I want to show us that's why I'm, I just showed us the backup, and I'm also showing us this one now. Okay, so Mr. Harum, are you in class? Is Mr. Aaron in class? Okay. Uh, Cyber Tommy. Oh, forgive me. I did, did, I, did I call that correct? Let me look for the person. Cyberman. You can hear me, sir. I am listening to you, sir. Awesome. So, can you help us to? clone the machine and then don't change the SID number and trying to join it to the same machine you cloned it from on a domain at your leisure and give us feedback. Is that possible? And yeah, please, I will be grateful if I have you to just type the type it out. That's all. Mm -hmm. all right, we'll do that. Yes. Who else can help us do that? Again, let's have like three witnesses. Who else can help us do that? Can we have like three witnesses? Uh, 
Uh, okay, so I want to stop. All right, Mr. Abatunde, thank you. Do you want to help us to do it or you want to raise a point? I'm stopping share now so that you can see. The I'll, see I'll try. I'll, work, I'll try. All right, you help us. I like that. Thank you, sir. Remain one person. I just stop share so I can share my whole screen. All right. So this is a cloned server. I cloned it from Python server, which is also our uh, our domain controller. So once this one is up properly, I'll show us how you can generate SID number for a machine so it can now function independently on its own. So the project is that you're not going to generate SID number. After you cloned it, then try make it connect, change the IP addresses, and then try to make it connect to as a replica server. And let's see what's going to happen. Okay. Is there anyone in class as of today that has completed the O that is up to date? Is there anyone like that in class? Yes. Who is that person? Tosi. Mr. Tosi. Oh, yes, excellent. Sir. So, Mr. Tosi, five choco points for you. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Do you know Thank the you. choco point concept? Mr. Deyemi so far has one choco point. Mr. Saeed has one choco point. Mr. Ayo has one choco point. And I said at the end of maybe be the module or the whole class, we'll find something for the highest, maybe the top three choco points. So uh, you gave five choco to a guy himself. Yes, now because you uh, have the whole class. Right? You don't you don't beat no, you never be completely. Just go and update your own class too. And let's see if the Choco point will reach. I All can't right, so, Choco point. No, voila. I'll be waiting. <clears throat> so let's do this. How do you generate special security ID for a, for a clone virtual machine? You come to your file explorer. Then this PC click on this PC and then you select, if you double click, look at this, right? Windows. Yeah, I think we show us that. Right, I show you, you remember now. Yeah. From Windows, you navigate to the folder system 32. From there, you navigate to sysprep here. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. And from there, you run this executable file. Okay. And like I said, you check, you generalize. Okay. And say, okay. Right now, what he's doing is Sysprep is working, processing, clean up this Sysrep plugins. All that it needs to do, right? It is here. I'm going to share this with you. So once that is done, then this cloned machine becomes independent. It becomes independent it can interact with any other machine on the network on the domain it now has a mind of its own as well so that's it so that's, okay. the, that's the essence of the sid exactly that's the essence <clears throat> today we are going to look at sharing and security so Part of your job as 
a Windows Server Administrator or a Windows Network Administrator is you coordinate security of folders and files on the network. Please excuse me. Okay, it coordinates the security and how to share folders and files on the network. All right. Sharing folders make them accessible to network users and probably you as well. So after you have configured your server, you must share files or disk to enable network users to access files and disk. When sharing files and folder, you can also enable administrators and clients to access the files and folders offline, even when the server is off. But in real sense, why does your server need to be off? Okay. So, where has that day of network storage before? Such that everything you see on the on the on, on the domain on the network, you have a drive where you save or where you store things. Okay, to those of us that work in corporate offices, you know there are some files that they are not resident on the local drive. That means on your yes. computer hard drive. Yes, and there's yes. a place you normally go to pick them. You mean like SharePoint? Exactly. Thank you. The SharePoint. Okay, it is because the administrator of that network has made that point available to all of you to access. All right. There's also a SharePoint or a shared file on the network that only the branch service manager of a bank, of all the branches in that bank, can access. It. All right. There is, uh, there are some shared folders that you can only read them, you cannot write into them. Read and write, I mean, you cannot make changes. You can only copy what is there and use for your own uh, whatever purpose you need it for. You cannot edit it. Read only. Thank you, sir. Read only. All right. And uh, there are two ways you can do that in Windows. You can do it from the server manager in dashboard, or you can do it by configuring file shares using your file explorer okay so let us go and do that now so in the in the whole of this class what we have been doing showing you is the basic things that a windows administrator or a windows network administrator or windows server administrator should know all right because the idea is you become a plug and play so if you get the job into an organization as an administrator. Even though you are coming with zero experience, but because of this training, you know some basic things of your functions. All right. And depending on your own diligence to do practice, to, to do labs, it will also help you to up your game. All right, so these are the reasons. Exactly. These are the reasons why we pick the key things to show you. So let us go and do it from the server manager now. This one. I want to share at this point. I prepared the notes, so we'll follow it. File storage and services, shares, drop down to new share. Where's our machine? File storage and services. Let's check what you are trying to create. So look at this. Uh, Look at the machine we cloned that we changed the security identification. It has finished and then it is restarting itself. So from this point onward, I can use this cloned machine as a standalone machine. It doesn't have to wait for anybody. All right. 
So that's it. I'm going to close it once it is done. I don't know how to clone a machine. No. You do not know how to clone. Is that Mr. Aaron? <coughs> oh, I'm just coming. No. You're welcome. And last <coughs> class, I, I missed out from the last class. You watch the video. You watch the video. Thank you. You watch the video. Uh, you uh, you, not, you not see they push me to video watching. Hello. Yes, now. Nah. Hello? Mr. Saeed. Me, yes, Mr. Saeed, you will teach me. Oh. Yo, no issue. All right, thank you. Yo, uh. All right, so here we are. We want to share folder and share the content of the folder from the server manager. When we are done here, we'll go and show us how we can also share from the file explorer. So from here, I said you click on file and storage, and then you also come to shares. This is our system is doing well today. Did anybody lay hand on the system from afar? A player. All right. So when we are done with that, our share uh, window is up. You come to task. And please, say, please, a, a, a bit a backward, a little, please, please. Okay, so how do I close here? Let me see if I can maximize this first. Right. Is anybody trying to come in? Okay, nobody. Let me close this. So we say we want to show you as a network, Windows network administrator or Windows server administrator, how you can share files and storage on the network, okay? So you are, you are, the, you are the server administrator for West Africa. And then there are files that is, is a common files, okay, such that when they push it to you from the international headquarters in Aberdeen, you put it in a particular folder or directory on the network whereby all other sub heads can access it. All right, either you want them to access it to be writable or you want to assess, you want them to assess it to be readable only. That's what we are, we are trying to show us now. This is your server. This is your office. Okay, you come to file, storage, services, shares, and then you drop down task to new share. All right, you drop down task to new share this is where you are so do you want to share smb share as a quick or advanced or applications i think i did a short explanation here did i mm, i think i did not but let's go and look at it one by one so if you do quick share, this basic profile represents the fastest way to create an SMB file share. Typically used to share files within Windows-based computers, suitable for general file sharing. All right, so when you are doing your own, take your time to click on each of these things and read the description. Read the description, all right? Hey, what does yeah. SMB stand for? I think I keep it somewhere here. I'm coming. Let me. I Google that. I've forgotten. I Google it and then find it for us. Server message block. You said? Server message block. Block. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I remember the block, but I don't want to goof with that SMB because 
I'm not the type that see things I don't remember or that I forgot. Yeah. It's a message block. Okay. But the one that's available for us is the quick share. And we can follow that gradually. We say next. All right. Do you want to share by volume or you want to share by path? I think you want to share by path. So share by volume means that you are sharing. The, no, now, remember when you wanted to spin up this server, you were asked how uh, the number of your local, your the PC in front of you, your local hard disk, how much of the hard drive, the storage device, do you want to use or set aside for this server? Remember, we picked 34.5. Now that we are doing sharing, the sharing wizard is asking us, do you want to share a volume of that or just want to share a path? Can anybody tell me the difference between sharing by volume and by path? Okay. I think sharing by volume is like giving the user the access to the whole local disk. Okay. How about by path? And the custom part is just out of the local disk. You only want to create a folder, a particular part. Aside from that, just go straight to that part. Any other, you, you, are, you are restricted only to that particular part. Thank you so much. Perfect. So if I share by volume, all right, I'm giving away part of this 35.4 gig, which is remaining 22.9 gig, away to the network or to the whoever on the network I'm sharing with. So that volume will be taken away from me. This will lead us to another question now. This is just logical in IT. But if I share by custom path, it means that the I still have the whole of my ad, my storage on my server, right? But whatever I'm sharing with them is only the path. They can only access it. They don't have access to take portion of my storage. I hope you all get that. Okay, so what I'm saying is I have an external hard drive and I want to share, I want to create a sharing mechanism on my network. I can either share part of that, assuming that hard drive is one terabyte. I can either share like five gig for that network. So it means that I do not have I now have access to one terabyte minus five gig on, on that my server because I've shared five out. Or I either share a part into my hard drive. So if I share a part into my hard drive, I still have the whole of my hard drive. It's just that I can allow them to access a particular folder or file inside that hard drive. Okay, so let me ask you data center. Okay, so there's a data center in uh, Arizona. And then you, you are here in Nigeria. And then what you do is you help uh, federal government to do NIN. So you are collecting data. That means you need storage, okay? And data center in Arizona is the one hosting your storage server. What form of sharing do you think they are doing? Are they sharing by part or they are sharing by volume? By part. I think they will share by volume. Okay, so give me a uh, backup. The person that said by part, how? Do you want to explain? The person that said volume, do you want to explain? Yes, I will explain by volume. Okay, so let the person by part go first. Okay, by pass simply means they are not giving me the all, they are not giving me, they are, they are shifting me to the allocation of what I need. Okay. That's of like, it, it based on the portion of what I want, I'm subscribing for like only one gig. They, okay. only, they are only giving me only one gig out of whatever 
I'm paying for whatever I need. But if I'm going by volume, that means I have access to everything on their database. Okay, so the person on that, that volume, volume. I have access to everything. Okay, by volume, my understanding by volume. I, I I may not know what the type of words, the volume of data I will be collecting. If yeah. I am taking by part, what if I log the line, it gets feed up. But if I am taking by volume, I am fresh as sure, oh, this is what I have. And no matter what I am the information I'm getting, this is what I have. And if I'm doing by part, meaning I am taking from existing uh, volume, I don't okay. have absolute control over the part I am taking from. Okay. All right. I'm enjoying this class. Getting interesting. So it is by volume. However, your explanation is not uh, satisfactory. It is not by part, sir. Okay, and this is it. Uh, I support federal government with NIN registration. So I need storage device to put this data I'm collecting. So I go and meet Amazon, AWS, either any of their hosting zones. Let's say West, Arizona, right, or Florida, and they I say, okay, this is what I have. What they do is they either lease, which only is lease to me, a portion of storage based on after I've discussed with them the capacity of the volume of what I will need. They don't give me a part. If they give me a part, I cannot control that volume how I want to. I cannot partition it. Mm. The red, uh, whatever I want to do on it, they can, I, I cannot do it, all right? So because their services, they do infrastructure as a service in that situation, IAAS, right? They sell to me a portion of volume. So when they are sharing, what they are sharing is by volume. Okay, so they can, I can say, okay, and you know, don't doubt, don't doubt the WS. The storage facility they have can save the data generated by the old world 10 times. Mm. So volume is not their problem. All right. So I can say, okay, so for this is the capacity of what I will be storing. That's okay. We can give you lease storage lease of say two thousand terabytes. All right. So they shared to me by volume. I can use that volume however I want. Do we get it now? If they share by part, they only give me a link. I don't have control over that volume. Now, sharing by volume, the first speaker does not mean you have access to the whole storage. No, I can I can partition and give you a part of the volume that I have. Okay. All right, doesn't mean I'm releasing okay. everything to you. Listen. Please answer your question. I'll be asking your question. Someone is. Hello, sir. Yep. Okay, I just want to have to what you just said now. All right, so you see that part, it's just like um, you are giving somebody access to a folder, exactly. Okay, inside your hard disk, yep. you know, your hard disk is the volume, yes, that's the storage. Yep, so when you're now restricting somebody to let's say the document folder alone. So that is the path exactly. to the document folder. Yep. So Thank as you, you said again. Check Go back. Ahead. Go ahead, please. Complete your Okay. Talk. So as you said again, there will be a lot of restriction. Um, if you are using by path, you will not be able to do, you will not be able to add up to your storage if your storage is filled up. So, and that is the reason why most of the um, AWS or any other data center will not, we, we only give people access to um, 
they do by mm-hmm. volume instead of yes, by, by volume exactly they just give you volume do anything you want to okay why why me I, why i said uh, by volume to have a full access i'm not actually talking from the uh, uh, part of um, um cloud um, providers okay. i'm talking like um, you are having on premise uh, you are having on premise data center so in mm-hmm. on premise data center mm-hmm. definitely you you are dedicating the server for your files, we we'll call it file server. Yeah. So you will give, okay, full uh, what was it called? Your full volume, your volume, to that particular um, project. Yeah. So that when you give parts, when you give parts, maybe when you are running out of storage, you there is no way you can increase your storage. That's my idea. So why do you say that? Said, why do you say there's no way I can I can increase my storage if I give part? Okay, let's say I have a folder. I've yeah, shared the folder. just to be storing in the folder now. It is the problem of the server administrator. That is, I'm talking as a server administrator now. So why won't you be able to increase? Okay, so I'm in your office. I yes. I I work at the front desk. You just send me. Okay the link of a network storage part. This is where mm. I can save, I cannot save uh, clients, maybe know your customer, all this blah, 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 on my local hard drive. Mm. I can save it, you give mm. me that part, all right? So yes. it is, for me, I don't have the headache of storage being full. My own is, should be, I should be saving here, I save. Yes, So yes. for you, that is managing the network, yeah, the one that is mm. bothered about it, that the storage is full or not. Yes, yes. Did you get? But yeah. when you share by volume, you only have access to the volume I give to you. If it is full, you either come and ask for more, I expand it for you, and you can do it anyhow you want. All right, so we are going to do this sharing by part, and then we say by part, we browse, where we want it to be saved. Okay, where, where we want the path to be. Okay, this is my drive C. Right. I will say, yeah. Oh, we should go and create a folder first, Abi. It will create a folder by itself. Okay. Create a folder from there. All right, but we okay. can also go and create a folder. If we go create a folder, that means we are doing sharing by file explorer. Remember, I okay. said there are two ways. Okay. All right. The, the, the common way you will see on YouTube is by File Explorer. But by File Explorer, you will not be able to share by volume. You will not even have access to this. All right. Mm. But this one we are doing, they will lead us to the same point. So when you pick where you want to save, you can say next. All right. Oh, okay. You can put name. What do you want to call? The name, let's say item file description for schedule five. Right, you say next. What do we enable here? Check enable access, allow catching of share. So we, we're going to get to a point here today where I will show us catching. Encrypt data access. If you don't want to, if you want to control who and who can view this rebel, at this level, we don't need to. Let's move ahead. You can see that these are the permissions given to different persons on the network. You can customize this permission if you want to. You can add who you want to have or who you don't want to have it. User, you can remove it. The access is used and execute. Administrator, the access is full control to the folder, to the subfolders, and to files. Okay, You can do whatever you want to do here. But we are still going to show you. So let's uh, move ahead. Next, 
and then let's create and just like that we are done now we have created the item file look at it here have you seen it everybody mm. we have created item file that we can share on uh, that is already already being shared on the network but that yes. is your c drive exactly your local drive you can also decide if you have assuming you have partition like this is my machine in front of my host in front of me let's say i partitioned it okay i can go and save it in a particular drive okay anything virtual machine they should be going to this side of my hard drive either your ssd or your hdd that is one that we have done right uh do we move ahead from here or oh, i show you this okay so let me let's also do the second one before we begin to show us okay this one is having an issue let me close this I think I already show us what we what to do here as generate our SID so we can enjoy our class. All right. We have treated sharing file from server manager. Let us come and share from file explorer. You still come to your server. The file explorer. Scroll down. We are not seeing that file explorer. No, it's not my system. It is your own system, sir. No, it's not. Yeah, I can see it too. Yeah, I can see it too. Check your system. It, it's your yeah. system. We can see it. This is Zoom. Zoom is in control of the old desktop, so there's nothing I, I can scroll down. Okay. Look at that, sir. Okay, okay continue. Right? Continue. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. see it. It is your system that you need to. All right. This PC, this is where we are coming. Okay. Right, this is where we are coming. So we can either create a folder here. What do we call it? Shared folder. I can't find you. Thank you. And we say we clear the file. Let me refresh. Right click, share with specific people. Administrator, these are the two people we have here. But you know, this is a network server. So who do you share with? You want to share with everyone. Except if you want to share with administrators only. We want to share with everyone. What do you see? Add. This is everyone. What kind of permission do you want to give them? Is it read? Is it write? Let's give them read, read only first. Let's just say read and be checking it one by one. What what if we have what if we have, no we have clients already we can be adding if we, let, let's say me now am I I've created like five clients yeah I can just be I can I can share with those some of the clients right of course yes but remember uh, in our user policies mm. you are creating groups you are creating users yes. 
so these are this is where all these things link up together all right so assuming the file i want to share this particular item file too i want only the sales team to have access to it that's where we select the sales we select the sales group so all the OU. do you get now are you linking it together so this is where yes, all these yes, things yes. are interwoven so let us give everyone read only permission and let's say share so successfully we have shared this okay so how do we know if we have shared it now if i come to the search pane here and i do work work work, work. Work work means search this. What's the name of my server? Let's go and let's go and check the name of our server. This is controller. This I tell this you. Okay. Work, work. I think this all that name. Okay, so that's not an issue. I just want to show us that this Hello? file is sharing. And that thing we can do is. Hello? Yeah. Someone is saying something. Okay, so I shared with everyone, right? Let's come to. Have I powered my. I thought I did that. Okay, so I'm going to power my client machine now. Where is it? So we're going to access that folder. But before we do that, can we do something? Can we create something inside? Is that possible? Let's have a notepad. And let's see. Welcome to I can show the file. And uh, we see. So we have this here. By the time this comes up, we're going to see if we'll be able to access that folder from here. But we are waiting for that. Let's look it. Sorry, I have a question. Please ask your question, sir. Okay, in an enterprise. Hello. Uh, hello. 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 I can hear you, Mr. In Aaron. An... Are you talking to us? If not, no, I'm, I'm not talking to. I'm not talking to you. Sorry. Okay. In a in an enterprise network. Yep. The does uh, the sharing by volume does it apply uh that or is only if you have on 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 premise storage uh device it, it applies if assuming you have on premise storage device are you getting me now I'm, I'm not getting we have okay. on store on storage um, on premise storage device like okay so in let, let's say in your office now yes all right you have uh, a mini a mini data center in your office 
okay and there is a particular uh storage that it cannot be resident on on the hard drive of each users or each client host so let's say in mtn office no in yek office now huh yes they have different computers running on client os windows uh, windows enterprise yeah all right now and they process a lot of things the process pictures the process uh, upload different secondary school we upload their uh their their student results okay you cannot afford to save those things on your local drive so two things you can do are you with me sir yes you either have a data center that you paid that is doing this for you or you are hosting a mini data center on premise Did okay. you get so get. you have a room where you have gigantic machines just for storage only okay. so when you want to what you now do is you configure network storage at that point okay i mean when, and when you configure network storage you make it such that you share it. Now, what you are sharing to, to the client on that network, you are either sharing a path to them or you are sharing volume to them. Okay. So what, what that means is when they receive something, from cloud, they share, they, they, they save it locally on your own local storage device. But it is not local, it is not resident on their own personal computer or the office computer. It is resident in data center you have on site. So, so the data center you have, uh, uh, a premise data center you have, Yes. So let's say maybe you uh, for the department that are processing only pictures, yeah. you can now yeah. say, okay, this department I you can I, you can give them so a volume of the some volume some part of the volume of the data your data exactly center. of the storage. Uh, okay, you cannot your uh, data storage rather. Yes. That's okay for the for the for the department that process that is processing picture, you have five gig. Something right? like that. Yes. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let me see. Sorry, sorry, see. sorry. One, one of sorry, please. But one of the sense of file uh, file sharing is for people that are in, not in that particular location to have access to the resources. You understand? Maybe there is a resources that a branch needs is to have access to it. So that's the essence of file sharing. It doesn't actually necessarily mean storage. But those people need those resources on those file storage at the back end where the domain controller and the storage is. That's the essence of file sharing. It's not that's, as if they will be dropping. You're right, but it is not complete. That's partial. So the person that is talking about storage is, is right as well. It could be for file sharing. It could be for storage. Hello, sir. Are you getting me? Is that Mr. I'm Aaron? Saying it, if it is for storage, the provision will have been made so that the storage will not be, they will have, at least they will have done calculation to know what is going to be dropped by the various people that will be accessing that stuff. So they were already catered for the storage that will be provided for before that stuff is, before so what provision do you think is, is happening to that storage? Is it not being shared? If it's not being shared, yes. will they have access to it? Yes, it's going to be shared. What I'm actually saying is, before it is being shared, they would have made provision for all those particular things. That's what I'm just trying to say. All right, so we are, the two of us are correct. 
I'm just trying to explain to that uh, person that asked that question. All right. Because the reason why you want to share by volume is for storage. And that's what he's asking. He's talking about, he's not talking by sharing by, by path. Share by path is really for access sake or resources so that people remotely can re access that uh, resources. And that's what you just said. But if you share by volume, why do you want to share by volume? It's for storage. So do you know that sometimes eh, in a network, we have um, something we call network apart storage. Yes. Yes. Um, the storage will not be the same storage that is domiciled on our client or on our server. No. Uh -huh. So if like in my organization now, we have a data center. Okay. And we have another one we call network attached storage. Okay. We, use, we use it to sometimes to back up most of the work that we do in, this, do. Uh, in the data center. Okay. And as well, we can go as far as to provision storage from the network um, from the network attached storage for other clients. So it's not necessarily mean that um, the storage must be on the server. No, it must not be on the server, but if it is a storage that you're going to be querying, assuming it's a database, yes, it must be uh -huh. on the server. For yes, the back end, sure. for the back end to be able, just like that person talking about back end, for them to be able to access. All right, so imagine the kind of storage that banks are using, and you have your fintech. It's not, it's, mm. it's not an attached storage. It's a storage, yeah. it's, it's, it's a storage that must be domiciled and must be accessible. All right, so let's move on. What we are trying to do here is uh, we created a file here. We shared a folder here, okay, with everyone. This folder. And then uh, you want to see if you can access the folder from the client side. Okay. All right. Okay, sir. We can either come here. Let's see. So what's the name of our domain? I can I can see. All right, people, are we in class? Yes, sir. Yes, we are. Can we see now? See the one we created on the server side? Have you seen it? And see the one we created on the Explorer from our server machine. So this is sharing by path. Okay, so we, we actually... Uh, inserted the file into this folder let's click it if we'll be able to see it can you see we are able to what to see it can we read it yes sir right can we write no let's see are we able to write Let's see. Can we see this? You yes, do not have permission to open this file. See the owner of the file or an administrator to obtain permission. What does this tell us? 
class. It is read only. It is read only. Thank you very much. Can we Question. copy the file? Can we copy the file and place it on our desktop? Okay, I, I like that. I enjoy when I have people in class like this. Okay. Don't save. Let's see if we can copy. And then we'll go and paste in our local drive. Is that one of what you're saying? Yes. This Take it to desktop, let's see, to desktop. Okay. Viola. So it can be copied. So we should be able well, you to- You cannot write on it. You cannot write on it. So this is good for sharing. I'm sure you can write on it now. Of course, because now on. it is not yes, on your now that is on your desktop. You exactly. Can write. It is it is not on your network now, it's on your desktop. You can do whatever you want to do with it. All right. Okay, but the one here, where's our network storage? Work work. We can I actually work work. We here. can actually work work uh, to our IP now, the IP of the server, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know the non IT guys will not be wondering why are these people back in like this? What's, what's, what's this work work? All of them are shouting. Don't worry. You will join the work work soon, too. <laughs> All right. So, this. Uh, this thing is good when you want to share a control document. All right. You know what I mean by control document? For those that have. Uh, idea of how absolutely you want to so, maintain the integrity of the file exactly so nobody, nobody tampers with it you it's, cannot do anything right. with it it's only you cannot say okay maybe i send we just finished the minutes of a meeting okay and i've prepared you just finished the meeting i've prepared the minutes of the meeting and i was asked to just disseminate that minute to the key head of offices across all our regional headquarters. This is what I'll do to it. I'll make it readable only so that Mr. A will not go and edit something that a guy didn't say during the meeting and just save it back on the network. Do you get, or oh, let's say you work in a, a technical firm where they do SOPs or mm -hmm. test methods of, a, of, 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 a, of an analysis. And then you prepare the SOP of that, uh, of that operation. And then it's a controlled document according to ISO or whichever quality management system you are using. This is where you put it. You make it read only, it is not editable. Okay, maybe if you want to review it in every two years when the old team has put their own review and you accept it you come here again and edit it all right so what can we do from here what can we do from here can we look at this file properties this is sharing I come to advanced share, no, not advanced sharing, security, right? Security and say, I'm sharing with everyone. Can I edit the permission I'm giving them? Hmm. Can I edit the permission I'm giving them? Can I say, right? Are you with me? Yes. Can I say right? If I say right, can I apply? Say okay. Close. And if I come to this place, if you refresh, can we edit it now? Confirm if you can write now. Let's 
הסעיף. פולדר <coughs> You edit, you perfect everything, you save it, now copy again and don't put it like that. Go. It, it's not that. good now. That's what we try to do when we are trying to save now. No, we can save, no. Okay, you don't, you know why you dump it in that for that? It will tell you that uh, yeah, there's another, the, it's, it's, uh, it's the same, there's the same name. There's the same you name. You want to re- re- replace? Replace. replace. Uh, It won't allow you because you don't have full control. Let me show you, sir. Uh, Remove the access first, please. Properties. Security. Security. Edit. See, full control, modify. I didn't give you right to modify it. Then right, right is down. Remove the right. I should remove the right? Yeah. yeah. What else do you want me to remove? It's okay like that. So let's go and test. Yeah, go and copy the other one outside. Refresh first. Close this one. Copy the one on the desktop. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. And let's paste it inside the right. Paste it. Mm. Replace. Replace. You see, bros? You need permission. Okay, thank you. I just want to be sure it's, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah, I know that, yes. So I like it. I'm taking like a Nigerian. I like an Nigeria. interactive class, yes. You should be... See, when they say uh, a document uh, uh, is uh, uh, controlled... Uh, 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 Femi, yes, sir. Then for the non-IT guy, you can tell them how to map this instead of going to work, yes. work all the time. Work work is easier for them now. No, just if it's better just map it for them so that they will just go there and click on it, they open it. There's no need to do mapping. Okay. Why do you think mapping is easier than work work? When you can just you might not remember. Well, as long as you remember the name of your domain, you don't need that the is whole it. Full what? Name. Okay. What I did is just work work. My domain. I enter. It gives me all the shared folder on that domain. Okay. Do you get? Mm-hmm. Instead of finding network, this and that, you get. So, I've been able to show us how we can share folder. So, what that means is, okay, how about We're creating from here. Look at it now. This is item file two, right? Can I create from, we are running on client, excellent. Can I create from here? No. That means I don't have the permission over this folder and over this what? File. Now, please. Get this right. There are two levels to permission and security. You can have permission over a folder, a directory, right? And not have permission to the files inside the folder, to the content. Are you getting me? Mm. You can also have permission to both folder and the file. So this is what I mean. This is what I mean now. Look at this. This is a folder. If I open it, this is a file inside. Yeah. I can also come here and set the properties for this one security as well. Do you get? I can put mm-hmm. full control. I can say I give full control to this particular folder. 
sorry, to this particular file. Mm. So as I'm giving this full control now, what it means is if I come to client, I'll be able to have access to this file. But if there are other files, files, God bless you. If there are other files of any kind here, and I didn't set specific permission for them, the one I set on this folder is binding on everything, all on all the content. Do you get it now? So it is yeah. possible that you are even able to access a folder. Let's come here. You see, the moments we created there, it is happening here. It is possible that you are able to access item file too, and the only file you can enter or you can open is this one. So the last one. Or even the last one. Anyone. Is it is the last one now? Okay, is, is it last? No, I'm just giving for instance now. Okay. Are we are we in class? So you as network administrator, your work is also as a security of the network. So you can even see it and I can even make it so that you are not able to see it. Mr. Femi, right. sorry, I have a question. Please, sir. Okay, thank you very much for this particular part. I actually, last um, last three years, something like this came up. There is um, a, my, my, like my, in my office now, we have, if, if, I never knew there was that folder was like six to it. Never, yeah, I never knew that, that there is a folder like that. Okay. So, um, one particular department needed to share files with uh, outside network. Okay. So I there, there is the ticket for that. Then I looked at it. The ticket was assigned to me. I looked at it. I said, ah, how's I want to do this one? Now? So quickly, I related to the infrastructure guys. Okay, okay guys, so look at the record. It's okay. Yeah, there is a, a part. So there is a server file, server file already. All of them have their files that they can access. I say, okay, this is the department. Then they now sent me the IP address of the server. Okay. okay. I I walk walk to the IP address. I saw all the shared folder. Yeah. Then in the shared folder, there are particular other. I can I don't have access to every other folder but because I was actually. One. I stepped down because I was actually doing it from her system. I took Team Viewer to her system, so okay. I could not. I couldn't have access to every other one except that particular folder, that the one that belongs to the department. Yes, yeah, so, so yeah. I had access to that file. I had access to the file. I told her to move the file she want to send out because the file is a very bulky file, and okay. we don't allow you uh, USB um, drives in the network. So she copied the file into into that place. Then, you know, look at where um, the question I'm asking you. I don't know if you if you can give us this. Okay. So after copying to that particular file, we did the network. We have access to it. So then I give me another IP address and username and password that you can use to access it from outside our network. Yes. Guest oh, login. Yes. Guest login. Yes. And so the, the IP address they gave me is not uh, is not um, not is not we use a class C uh, IP address, but okay. the IP address they gave me is for one seven two, not one nine two. Okay. That's the public IP. Okay. For them to access our network and a, a username and password, so with that they will not have access to that particular folder that I, I shared. I I actually mapped it to her. No, I told her she will be dropping any file she want to share with them. Okay. So okay. how is that possible? Okay, so from what you've learned so far, you didn't know that is possible. That is possible. How will now outsider now assess it? That is my question. How will I now I give that outsider IP address that will not be able to assess it with the user credential? Because they have linked your own file server, mm. right, with that particular IP address. Okay. And it's such that it is a private 
network. Only that IP can address it. Yes. That's what they did, VPN. Okay. Only that IP address can access it. Was it in this guy that I said I, I had an issue with my former company where I worked? It's not an issue, actually. Uh, we did a job for Exxon Mobil, and then we were meant to send them the result, and it's a classified document. They don't want you to get into the wrong hands. So what they did was just to create a guest login for me on their domain, on their server. And they sent me the link that I can use to log in. All right, so that's the same thing your network guys created. All right, so it is private because you cannot just log in on your normal on your normal phone and be able to access that thing. Is it possible? Did you try it? Uh, that is why I did not try it. So, so they could have also done what you call uh, secure file transfer protocol for you. So they create an SFTP. SFTP it was, for, it yeah, is, they open it's, a, it's an for SFTP. You. It's and an SFTP. Now, yeah, so they provide the credentials. Then what they now ask you is that you provide your own um, internet um, IP address, your public IP address. address. So they wipe that. Once they whitelist it, it makes sure that it is only that your public IP that can access they that. can access it. Then they provide you with the credentials. They give access to that, your IP address on their... They open the port for you with that one. So if you, are, if you try to be smart, you, even if you have the link, but it is not coming from that IP address, OYO. Are we in class now? Okay. I'm enjoying this session. Thank you so much for the amazing contribution. Yeah. And then... Uh, to the non IT guys, please listen and learn. Do your labs. Yeah, <laughs> Do your labs as well. Nobody brought it from everyone, actually. We all go here and we pick it when we go here. Okay. And it's a, it's a privilege to be among the people that have this thing, that, that, that are doing these things in real life and they are sharing with you. And that's why I said the other time that I prefer live class than to be watch video. Because I know in my class, I'm going to have people that are no more than me that will ask questions I can learn from. All right. So we are going to get to the point of FTP, SMTP, all these protocols and their ports and when they are obtainable. And we'll also learn more about them. All right. So does anybody have questions as we got start sharing now? Questions before we move on. Remember our file is here for do you know that we also saw this one on our network, the one we created here. I hope you know that we saw it. Is here. You share by volume. No, we didn't share by volume. I I showed us how to share twice, uh, two, two methods rather. This was the item file, the one we shared from our server manager, the dashboard. And this is the one we shared from the file explorer on the server machine. Right, remember- we started Can from... you open the item file folder? Okay. Is actually empty. So, okay, so I'm, okay. I'm trying to understand why it has a program files, the user's windows inside. How is this different from the, yes, okay, so the item file tool is shared via the network uh, yes. explorer. Yes. So, but what's the significant difference? We shared, we, we shared the C drive. So we, we carry yeah, everything, everything inside Everything inside the, that's true. Mm. That's true. Um, Mr. Femi. Yes, sir. Let me go. Just like one that. of our, just exactly. like one of our, our guy said the other time. Okay. Apart from doing work, work, which, which other ways that we can we use to access all these things? Mr. We can use the IP address of the server. 
Because it's only so work, work, and IP address. We can run. We can run. We can. You can run. You can click on that place we are working. Where work, work. Uh, type run, then click on it. You will now type the IP address. Uh, click it. Will take you there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Yeah. Femi, also, I'm in, I'm in order. Oh, yes, yeah, I know that. I just didn't want to load them too much because we are beginning to load them with command line now. These people that have, that have refused to update their classes. Even you, Mr. Aaron, you are still holding me class. You have no cover though. Huh? Your DHS and DHC uh, hmm? I have not done demo. You have to. Serious, I don't know. To I, I don't to. read. So watch videos. I don't, I don't, I don't fast watch it. Only Mr. Toshi in this class has been able to complete the whole class. And I hope he's following. I'm sure that person is following, obviously. Yeah. All right. Don't worry. I, pro I promise you, I promise you before next week, next weekend. I'll okay. be okay, I'm not promising you because I, I don't know how to do it. You, you have to because I will not come and teach you DHCP. And then I, will, I will come thing. and disturb you. No, Allah. No way. I, oh. I, I hope you can swim. Abio, uh -huh. where you are, where you are, where you are offshore. Because where I am, you have to. <laughs> you must, you, you must do past Olympic swim, I know. Okay, man. All right. So, uh, we've been able to do sharing. Can we talk about IIS? At least if you are able yes, to talk. I, I have interest in this IIS. All right. If we're able to talk about the uh, literature part today, and then uh, tomorrow we'll configure a web server and we move ahead. All right. So just as you have uh, Amazon Web Services, AWS, for Amazon, you have uh, IIS for Microsoft. It is flexible. It is a general web server from Microsoft that runs on Windows to serve requested HTML pages or files. Don't worry, I know we have plenty of people in class. So I have explained web server and HTML here in uh, how you can understand, but you can also do a Google search after the class, but for now we are going to explain it. All right, so as, as a window network administrator, part of your job is to be able to set up a web server for the developers on your team to work with. Now, what we are doing here is we take you from the basics, from the basics, Windows into Linux, into AWS, that's the cloud we will we'll be learning, and then into DevOps, right? But you need this knowledge from the beginning like this so that when you begin to see the advanced ones you will understand it better and especially when you begin to see scenario based question when you are writing your, your certification you will understand better all right so windows server administrator you are not a web developer yet even if you know how to develop uh web apps, mobile apps. What if, if what you are employed for is a Windows Server Administrator or a Windows Network Administrator, your job is to enable the environment for web service. It is not for you to what, to use it. So assuming in your organization, you want to have an intranet, Please pay attention to my words. Intranet is different from internet. Intranet is a web server that can only be accessed 
within the organization. Are we in class? Yes. Yes. All right. So I know while I was working with a Guinness Nigerian PLC 2010, 2012, we have intranet, we have internet. All right. And the web pages on the intranet, only users on that server can access them. All right. So if you go out of the company, not even with your phone, you cannot access them. It is only users on the server. Okay. So, but the basic is that at a point, they have configured IIS on that network such that you are able to broadcast web pages okay so this is also in line with sharing as well okay but iis is broad in the sense that if you have mega organization imagine a company like guinness the parent company is Diageo. There are files that we need everybody in the whole world to access. Sorry, not in the whole world. Globally, the, all the companies and parent companies, the ones in uh, Dublin, the ones in Ireland, the ones in uh, St. James Park, the ones in Egypt, the ones in all of them. So what do you do? You just configure IIS on that network. And then be publishing in HTML format what you want to share on that. That is web pages, such that users, administrators within that network can access it. And as well, you can also host the web server. By the time you host the web server, it therefore means that it's now accessible to everybody on the internet all right so an iis web server accepts requests from remote client computers and returns appropriate response the basic functionality allows web servers to share monitor that to share deliver information across local area network such as corporate intranet, right? Mr. Haron, where do you work, sir? I just want to <laughs> use as an example. If you are, if it's okay to ask you, just tell me pass if you don't want to share with us. No, 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 no. Sorry, I've worked with Zenit Bank as a system administrator. Okay. So I've left them though. We can use them. All right, so let's use Zenit Bank. Zenit Bank have intranet such that it is only Zenith Bank user mails within the old Zenith Bank domain that can access it. All right. Sepla is a, a marginal, ah, they have grown to be global now, they're no longer marginal. Is an energy company. They have intranet, corporate intranet, that it is only people within their domain that is that can access it. People like the HR. So assuming I want to go on leave. Okay, so this process of lighting. Imagine if the office of the HR is in a London, right? And I work for, I don't work for CEPLAT. And I work for CEPLAT in Nigeria. I'm using this as an example. And I need to ask for my sabbatical. And there are forms I need to fill. It just shoot to the internet. I go there, fill the form, submit. The person at the other end sees the form and is able to submit. Okay. But if I get home and I and I enter on my system at home and I try to log in into that website, I will only see on that website things they share with the general public. I may not be able to access the link. 
okay, except if they make it such that outsiders that have user login can also access it. That's intranet. Intranet is, it means that within, within the network, intranet. The net there is network. Intra is among within. And it can also be, can we all see my notes? I'm sharing it. Yes, we are yes, seeing it. Right. It can also be wide area network. Inter-network between networks. Inter-network. All right. So what is a web server? It's a computer program. You call it software. Or not sorry, not all. And hardware. So to every software, there is the component hardware. Because to every software, forget it, there is an hardware where they write it from or where it is Windows set from. So some people will say web server is a software, software. So they don't really mention the hardware part. They are right, actually. But that server, there is a host somewhere that is hosting it without that host as well. So when we say cloud, 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 there is a resident data center somewhere that is the hardware component of that cloud. Right? So web server is both a software and hardware, but most times people don't do what concerns you about the hardware as long as you, you do www.itan.py or itan.io. And he, and, he, and he returns uh, whatever you ask it for. Okay, so web server that uses HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol. So things on the internet, this is one of the protocol that we use to load information on the internet. Either image, either video, either this and that, okay. There are ways you can convert your common, uh, PDF file to HTTP so that I can load it on the internet. But it's not in this, uh, it's not in this place because you are not an internet uh, a website developer. However, I can find time to put it on our general page just to show us. Because I know some of us at some point might find our way into this place. This knowledge will be handy for us. All right. It uses HTTP and other protocols to respond to client requests made over the World Wide Web. Okay. Remember, someone was talking about uh, FTP and uh, uh, which other one were you talking about the other time? Mr. Was it Mr. Dimola? You are FTP, trying to. FTP. You said? SFTP, Secure File Transmission Protocol. Secure File Transmission Protocol, right? So these are protocols you can use on the web server, okay, to transmit data. We have, I think I have FTP here, File Transfer Protocol. For, for emails, I have Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. We have the SFTP, Secure File Transfer Protocol, okay? So the main job of a server is to display website content through storing, processing, and delivering web pages to users and clients. That's the main job, that's what it does. So when you log in into www.yek.com, okay, yek.com, that server one is storing that server is also processing and is delivering. So remember when we were talking about sharing by volume, that server is connected to a network storage where you have the database of all YX results since work has started. Someone was showing me yesterday that my YX result as far back as when I can remember. I can now view it on YX website. And I saw it, it is there. I asked someone to send me YX pin. I put it there and I cross checked. I think my English C6 is still C6. 
I thought we will have two. It's okay. No <laughs> so it can store. It can process. What do I mean by process? So at that point when I entered my registration number as far as that many years ago, and I entered my age and I entered my full name, it will process it. It will go into its own database. All these things happen back end. There are commands or uh, the, the written program that controls all these at the back end. Okay. They, they just give you a user interface. Eh? They give you a UI that makes it easier for you. But what is going on when you click enter is that it begins to query every place it is code to bring out your own results, not the person that sat beside you when you are writing the YEC or the GPA. That is processing and delivering it. Okay, that is processing. At the point you see it, it is delivering web pages. Delivering at times could be in form of sending a mail. All right, delivering at times could be in form of moving money from your fintech app to another person's app, uh, another person's account. It could be in different forms. All right, and these are things that have made life easier for us. And what we are doing in the next seven minutes and tomorrow is to understand how these things work. All right, so beside HTTP, web servers also support other protocols, which I've mentioned, SFTP, SMTP, FTP. They use them for email, file transfer, and storage. Web servers are used in web hosting or the hosting of data for websites and web-based applications. Okay, so when you say you want to host a site, what you are saying in the sense is that you need a web server that will host your site. So by the time the UI UX person, they be able to develop the graphics and design interface, convert it to any of these protocol, the next thing is they host it for you. And the hosting is that that person is creating for you a server. Where everybody can begin to watch. Okay, sir, Ben, sir. Eh, Nipa, Ariyoni. Oh, fuck. Hello, sir. Share with me, sir. Okay, so I have to mute. Also. Help us to mute. Help us to mute. Okay. Okay. Let's move ahead. So, there are other type of web servers around. Okay, you have Microsoft IIS. Apache HTTP is a kind of server as well. In fact, it's more popular than Microsoft. Uh, you have NG Inc., you have Light TTP, and you also have Sun Java servers. Has anybody heard of Apache before? It's quite common. Yes. Right. Yep. Yeah, Apache and IIS, that's the common one. These are the two that are common ones. Thank you. So I said I'm going to explain this to you. That's why I put them here. HTML is a hypertext markup language. It's a text-based approach, which helps you to describe how contents are contained within an HTML file. Okay. So this is the markup that tells your browser how to display text, how to display images, how to display other forms of multimedia. All right, so let's just say is the language that web servers understand. Okay, so if you don't conform to that language and you host that server, it might not be useful because people are not going to be what to be able to access it. So you are seeing my screen now, right? There is a way they have. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, let me go, let me log in into one of the missions and show us something. Now look at, there's a way that they have arranged this user interface that if I click on server here, 
it takes me to what is in server. Right? Although this is an OS, let's take it as though this is a website. Right? Can I launch a website? Let's see if it will not drag our machine, our class. If it won't drag it, we can use it. Well, my system is impressing me to do. What's happening? Mr. Femi, huh? I have one system that is in my mind now. The one of my friend. Yes, ah! No, not ASA, it's HP. Ah, so HP, ASA is making very I'm, bad system now. It's, this one is HP, but it's a 20 gig RAM. Ah, are you going to Evan? <laughs> As successful? in, uh, my friend was just enticing me with it then. Eh? All right, people. Uh, he got it so much. He got it less than 100,000 in US. Ah. Okay. Two hundred, two hundred dollars. Serious. He said he, he just said in US now. Do you know how many distance you from here to US? <laughs> <laughs> he got me two hundred dollars. <laughs> that is not that we're just auctioning distance. it. All right. So <laughs> let's look at it. This is a website that is running on a, yeah. on a server that you don't even know okay. about. All right. This server is using some. A, a kind of language that we are able to see everything arranged this way. Yahoo is here, signing is here, uh, notification is here, mail is here, such that if you click on sign in, all right, it takes you to the sign in page. They have designed it and arranged it in a particular language format. We have someone in our class that is a software engineer. Is that person in class? I remember someone in that class is a software engineer. From the form that I saw, I was going to ask something now. But the person is not in class. Let's move on. Okay, so imagine if it is not properly written using the HTML. Huh? HTML is our hypertext. Transfer protocol. Markup language. All right. If it is not using HTML, there are other languages that other servers use, but this is the common one. This is the common one. Most of your streets, I can design websites, I can design websites, let me design for your church and your family. This is what they are using. HTML. All right. If it is not used and is able to host this, of course, we are going to host an intranet and I will show you because we didn't use HTML since it is intranet. You will see that it doesn't even look good. It doesn't look fine at all. Such that if you click on Yahoo, nothing might happen. Let me give you an, a live instance. Who has gone to use, okay, I won't mention the bank now so that someone will not come and attack me. Who has gone to use a bank ATM machine? And when you click on yes, it is no that is answering. UBA. No, I didn't mention you. Man. Don't put me in trouble. <laughs> huh? Everything is so disorganized that, and people, people that are combatant, even the security persons, they will tell you, do you want they to They will not yes? direct you. Press no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So he said that there's something wrong okay with the language they use to program that point it's not as though the system is not working something might have been wrong such that the yes has moved up or something so if you don't use the right language okay this software may not function properly it may not function properly Okay, so we're going to continue with these steps on how to install and configure IIS tomorrow. But before we move on, let me quickly share with us something. 
All right, it's still related to IIS. So I want to show you. Can you see my whiteboard class? Yes, 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 yes. Is it just yes, you? Yes, Where's everybody? Yes, yes, you can see. All right, so. Yes, boss. Let me create. I think I'm yeah, going to see your whiteboard. I might have to order for a pad now. Because if my mouse at times can like to do me something strong. This is just an interactive session and then. I didn't want to do this one. What are we going to call this? In a book. What, 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 what do you normally call it? It's a land, isn't it? Is this not a land? Local area. Yeah. Right. What do you call this thing here? This one. Gateway. Ah. No, no. There are cables now. Metro cables. Cable. Land cables. Cables. Land cables. So what do you call this? Workstation. Thank you. Client. Client. Workstation. What do you call this one? Switch. The switch. Thank you. Ah, these people, they are hotter than fire. Right? So assuming what I have here, this old land, let us say I have it here again. And I have everything here inside here as well. Okay. If this one here wants to communicate with this person. What's this place? Can you see my cursor? Good people. Yes. So what's this place called? This is oh. your gateway. This is your gateway because this is outside of this network. I was saying gateway. I didn't know I was mute. Oh, sorry. This is your gateway outside of this network. And what is called what, the device here is called the what? Router. Thank you. The device on this gateway is what? A router. And that is how this network one and network two can be able to what to communicate so you can have something like this is your cloud or you even call it a vpn virtual five bit network so if one and two wants to talk Isn't it? Are you following me? Yes. In those days, when we don't have virtual private network, what we normally have is radio and mass. Have you ever noticed far on top of the building of a, com of a company, you oh, see radio mass facing a particular zone. They are always strategic where it faces. So the branch of UBA in Ikeja, they will make the mass to face a particular place so it can communicate with the mass facing it from Ojota. But thank God we are past that point now. We now use what? 
virtual private network. All right, so you just go to the internet, you configure a VPN, okay, such that it is private, even though it is in the cloud, it is in the internet, but only these two can access them, except if there is any other one somewhere too that can access them. Sorry, if I, if I, if I may ask, sorry, oh, this, ask, VPN, this VPN, I don't really understand how it was. You know, just like you said the other time, you said before VPN, there used to be like kind of a radio, like transmission Exactly, link. yeah. I'll be looking, you know, I, me, I'm, talk, I'm talking from a communication point of view. Okay. Right, you know, before two, yeah, before two sides can communicate, there'll be a radio on them that will, they will sign their, they will use, uh, they will align, the alignment will be in order and they'll be able to communicate. And before VPN, that is how companies used to uh, connect to each other before, as in the companies of the different land. Yes. But now with, with the advent of the VPN, I don't know, how does the VPN work? Does it work the same way? Those are uh, radios work. No, sir. So VPN is uh, the cloud. It is virtual. Can you hear me, sir? Hello. Hello, I'm I'm listening. So VPN I, is. It is virtual. You don't need assembly or hardware. You don't need a Mac somewhere. Place like a Mac for another place. It is, it is in the cloud. It is, it, is, it is a network for a private network. Okay. Just the way we make uh, item.com. Huh? You know that's a network. We can make it, we can make item.com a network and make it be a private network but it is virtual because you cannot see a mask anywhere it is safe it is cheap it is more efficient are you getting me yes you I'm just need you. you just need to host a, a center somewhere that will be like a network center for that private network, maybe in US. You get so, so this this private net virtual private network now will now be the one that will be connecting exactly. all these exactly. Uh, so this router, if they need to communicate, they pass through this VPN. So you just connect, you link this router to communicate with this, link to this, link to this. Okay, I understand now. And that is the beauty of technology. Some people in our class, after five months and say six months, their work will just be monitoring. Is he sending necessary packets, checking the security of the place? Right on the internet now, there are courses full everywhere on cyber security, cyber security. Even those that don't know about it and those that know about it, I want to teach cyber security. You know, this is part of what they do to ensure that a private network remains a private network. To ensure that nobody is able to break in. Okay. So let us assume this is, this is Nigeria. And let's assume we also have another country far, far. Australia, right? And they are of the same company. Let's say they are both Google. Right? So if you need to network Nigeria with Australia, with that distance, huh? 
you might need to with the can you hear me yes all right with the kind of bandwidth you will need vpn may not work all right with the kind of uh service that you require you want to move you know this vpn is, is in cloud so everything is inside space okay they are, they are able to communicate at different frequency levels okay but in a situation whereby you need to move every data from nigeria to australia and to through like that vpn will not work so for the network guys what they use is what they use special transmission line fiber about it, they lay it in the ocean. Huh? VPN, internet VPN may work, but it's going to be limited. It depends on the bandwidth you need it to carry. Of course, you will say, okay, should be I'm in Nigeria and I'm chatting with my friend in uh, Australia or in Papua New Zealand. Of course, those ones are easy, but because what you are moving, the data you are transmitting is not much. Hey, All right, it's not much. But I can assure you, whoever is hosting, whoever is hosting WhatsApp, or whoever is hosting Google, that is allowing you to communicate between Nigeria and Australia, they have this kind of thing in place. Because by the time you combine data that individuals are sharing, you cannot go through any internet, either virtual or even a, either private or public network. Do you get? Does anybody agree with me that there is a transmission cable fiber optic that comes from UK to Nigeria? Yes, no. Yes. Me one. Thank you, me one. Do you remember the time that so, the, was it pirate sabotage cable uh, glow? Uh, yes. Whatever. Uh, deep sea. Yes. You know, you know there are some waters that they don't allow fishermen just because of this. Yeah, so all these things. See where we are coming from. From land, where at this point you just configure a switch here. Yeah. And then you tell Mr. Aaron, uh, send me the file of that customer. Send it to the branch uh, manager. What you are moving here is not a big deal. You can even use flash drive. Copy it from me and go and give it to you. Oh, that reminds me, Mr. Aaron, you didn't remind me. We were supposed to configure a client such that the devices will not be able to use uh, external stuff. Yes, yes. You didn't remind me. Look at you. All right. But we'll do it, please. Then at this point, what you need to transfer files and data is not much. But when it now comes to between two domains, see where we move to VPN. I'm I'm doing this, I'm doing this so you can uh appreciate internet and how it is shaping the world and it has not even started. It has not even started at all. So the earlier you get into this IC world, the better your position. And look at where you now want to share between Nigeria and say UK or Australia or New Zealand, those very far countries. What is obtainable here? You can do you want to carry flash drive for me and become someone else? No, no. All right. And that is where. I want to stop sharing now. Uh, Uncle Femi. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know, you said the VPN, the VPN might be is in cloud, right? Yes, sir. And the data center maybe is in US or something. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, but if the if if for that kind of distance, yeah. if you can have VPN 
uh, in cloud with data center in the US, you can see it, and the company is in Nigeria. They are come, we cannot do transfer yeah. file from Nigeria to Australia and things like that. Of course, I said you can. But just depends on how heavy what you need to transfer. Okay. That's why I talked about bandwidth. Oh, okay. I didn't explain bandwidth. Bandwidth is just like capacity. All right. The capacity in those days when we used to use the mask, you have the C band, you have the KU band. These are different capacity of uh, ISPs. Okay, I think the C band in those days cannot use cannot use more than 15, 60 hosts or 60 clients. You can use more than 60 computers on it at this point, at the part time rather. Okay, after 60, it begins to slow down. Did you get so these things are these things are okay there are i'm not sure if i'm not sure if uh -huh, exactly let, let me give you an idea now amazon aws the host server in fact they do all forms of service infrastructure as a service and Cloud as with any form of service in my IAAS, FAAS facility, change you get. They have VPN. But do you think they can host Glow with the capacity of what they do on VPN? <coughs> can they can they host Glow on VPN with the capacity of data no, no. around? Per second, do not even talk of a minute. This function. They can't. They must. They must they at can't. least establish a very strong pack, and that's why Glow on his own has its own cable fiber optics. It lays. They could have said well because uh, after all, Amazon is in US, and there are companies in Nigeria that Amazon is hosting, and they are whatever is in Nigeria, but because their bandwidth, their usage, they, what they need to use on that network is something they can, uh, Amazon can work and carry. But imagine heavy users like Glow, like MTN, you cannot host them on virtual private network. You have to dedicate, I mean, facilities to them because of the capacity of what they handle. Do you get it now, sir? Yes, I do. All right. So tomorrow where, where? we're going to begin with installation and configure of IIS tomorrow. And then once we are done with our IIS configuration, we just need one more class and that's DFS, distributed file system. And we are done with this module. Any questions for today, please? Do you think we have done justice? Yes. Okay. We're, we're, we're delivered. So please, I encourage us all to those that promise me, please watch your video, make your notes. Importantly, do your labs. Only you can do your press up. I cannot do your press up for you. If I do your press up for you, now me go build the muzzle, not you. Right? So please be encouraged to do your lap. Mr. Aaron, watch. As a matter of fact, the first five minutes tomorrow is dedicated to you to come and explain to us DHCP and DNS. So please make time to watch. All right. Mr. Israel, are you in class? Yes, sir. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. If there are no questions, the class video will be up. All right. Is it, is it next week that we are having break or upper week? Upper week. Yes. Oh. Yep. So, 
that's it for today. We'll continue tomorrow evening, same time, same venue. Please, are you we... sharing this document this evening? Yes. I'll share it with you now. Thank you. I promise you. Yeah. All, All right. right. Good night. Good Thank night. you. Uh